What are some ways to introduce some of this emotional regulation work um, uh, in the family? Do you have any suggestions for that? Um, well, for, for teachers, we teach who we are. So it does start, start with us. Yes. For parents, we parent who we are. <laughs> We don't turn it on and turn it off. So I, I do I do believe that. That's a Parker Palmer quote about teachers, but I think it's the same for parents. Um, and so I think the more that we can embody and the more that we can show them that we're practicing, not in the heat of the moment, that we take a moment for ourselves and we go, okay, I know you all are watching you know, Sesame Street right now. I'm going to take this moment for 10 minutes to go and sit in there. If you need me, let, let me know, but I'm just, I'm gonna quiet myself so that I can be patient with you for the rest of the day. <laughs> you know, just, just that idea that we do these practices so that we have them for the moments that we absolutely need them. Um, and so I think that's, that's probably, probably one of the biggest things is that, you know, we do have to like take control of our own well being so that they know they need to take control of theirs. And even at, even at three, I mean, books and, you know, there are so many videos out there that support, if it has to come from another voice other than the parent voice, <laughs> um, absolutely. There, there's much, much out there to research and access that could be the vehicle to get to a two-year-old, a three-year-old, a four-year-old, the songs we sing, the routines we have, all of those things are shaping um, their nervous systems. And so I, I just, I think the opportunity, the best time to do mindfulness or introduce mindfulness in a family, now, now is good. You've obviously had to practice in your own life to, uh, to embody this work. Oh, absolutely. And I see when I haven't done enough. <laughs> mm -hmm. I see the I see the outcomes of just not really being able to keep a balance. Mm. It's, it's balance is so often um, kind of my goal. I just want to be in balance. And it doesn't mean static. It doesn't mean, oh, I've got this. It's perfect. Let's leave it this way. You know, most balances, if you look at scales, they're still moving. They're still adjusting. Um, and so I just, I just, I do notice that um, my patience is greater than potentially what it used to be or what it, what I see in the reactivity around the people, in the people around me. Um, I've been to, I, I, I drive into our city and it's like 15 miles or something. It's, it's not horrible traffic unless of course somebody cuts you off and then you're like, wow, that's horrible traffic. Um, and I've had multiple instances on this little highway that I drive um, where it's, I have my family in the car and I'm driving and there's no choice but to go right up against the um, median, like onto the gravel at 55, 60 miles an hour because a semi is coming across and, and you have no option. And what's interesting is that my family will just say, you were ridiculously calm. Mm. I'm like, I, I wasn't calm. I, everything activated in my nervous system. Absolutely. The fear of everything, fear of losing my family, fear of every tiny car, you know, we're going to get squished. Everything activated. There was no calm, but able to manage able to make choices, still thinking with the rational part of the brain, not in survival, slam on the brakes, get hit from behind kind of thing. But I'm not kidding. It's like the same entrance ramp for four, maybe five times in the last year, two years. Same thing. It's amazing that I still drive that road. But, um, but I think it's an exercise in, you know, patience. And yeah, I do end up just haven't been hit yet. Knock on something here. Um, but just my son will just say, I don't know how you kept so calm. And I'm like, it's because I have a practice. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I practiced this morning and I just was able to balance all of that adrenaline, 
all of that cortisol, all of that that I needed to keep my wits about me and stay within, you know, six inches of the guardrail at 60 miles an hour. And I'm not necessarily thought of as a good driver, but that's how I am often when things get heated and crazed. Mm. So all right. the, the benefits, and I, I will tell those stories to students. And I think that, you know, you had asked, what do you, what do you do? How do you do this with young kids? And how do you do this with narrative, with story? Hmm. And so I, I don't disclose more than anybody needs to hear, but some stories just about, you know, little things like my dog did this. Anybody else have a dog? <laughs> so, you know, how, you know, it, how you can respond or how you can react and how would you like to have responded better so that you didn't yell at your dog or you didn't. And I try to use that instead of too many stories with, with yelling at kids. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I really, I think the stories and the personal experience and, and asking them to share their stories, like when did doing a sun breath or a rainbow breath help you? Let's, let's go there, you know, or when could it, or, you know, and really just try to draw out the stories. Um, I think that's really helpful. And, and there are those books out there um, that even really little ones can access and go, sounds like me. Hmm. You know, whether mm. it's mm -hmm. mindful panda, uh oh, I'm going to get it wrong. Do you know that one? No. Mindful monkey. Nope. Something okay. Happy panda, mindful monkey. How about that? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> stories. I love them. Catch new episodes of the Mindful Mama podcast and other free resources, including the Mindful Mom Guide at mindfulmamamentor.com. You can listen to every back catalog episode, including interviews with Dr. Dan Siegel, Ianla Van Zant, Sharon Salzberg, and get meditations, join our private Facebook group, and more. Go to mindfulmamamentor.com now. I'll see you there.